Okay, so the, the first thing that hopefully you learned about circuits was that you have to have some components. Do you remember what components we need to have to make a circuit? Power source. A power source. Very good. So, in order to create a circuit, you've got to have a power source, such as a battery. So this is basically the place where we're going to get energy. Okay. Um, a battery symbol in schematics. Uh, many of you drew the little cylinder for the battery and had a, you know, a positive side and a negative side, and that's all fine. But if you're going to draw a circuit, a battery is usually a wire connected to a long vertical bar. And then a close, short vertical wire, and then another wire. The long vertical side is positive, the short vertical side is negative. And that's kind of a standard picture. Now, I over um, exaggerate my long versus short and my closeness there because a, uh, I'll take it over here to the side, a capacitor. looks like this wire plate plate wire and so if you draw a battery badly to someone who knows way more physics than you do it begins to look like a capacitor so please make sure that you're careful in drawing your batteries and they're nice and vertical and close to each other you can um, write the positive and negative on there if you want to or not the long side is positive the short side is negative Okay, um, and what about units? What's a, a battery measured in? Which which is energy? But on the side of a battery, there's like usually 1.5 volts. There's some six volt, some nine volt batteries. So volt. is the amount of energy joules per coulomb that the battery supply joules per coulomb so the charge that runs through the circuit the electrons gain energy through this interaction with the battery okay um, the other thing we need what else do we have to have And then wires, perfect. A wire, which is a conductor. Conductors are materials that allow electrons to move and um, do a lot of covalent bond material, right, or atoms, elements, elements, yes, are conductors. Things that are not conductors are things like what, plastics and uh, air. Um, it's not a great conductor, but humid air is a good, can be a good conductor. Water with, pure water is an insulator, but then water with salts dissolved in it is a conductor. Wood is also an insulator. The problem with covering wire in wood is that wood also can be combustible. Yes, we can melt plastics and things like that too. So think of anything you would use to like uh, protect your hands from a hot um, dish. My oven mitts. The uh, if you have, I have wooden spoons at home to stir. You know, hot pots of spaghetti, and I have plastic spoon, big dipping spoons, and things like that. Or uh, metal spatula but it has the plastic handle to it or a wooden handle because it's an insulator and it keeps my hand from getting burned so um, a wire is a conductor insulators would keep it from um, allowing electrons and stuff to move so a wire usually symbolically is very boring it's a line and then what's the other thing we have to have truly <laughs> something that sucks up the energy that sounds like um, a 
officially a load. And a load is a resistor. An example would be a light bulb. Now, we like to use light bulbs because you can see them. You can see that something is happening. Um, I could do the same thing with a speaker. I could do the same thing with something that would generate energy in a form that I could detect with, you know, my eyeballs or touch or something like that. A resistor, in, in the very um, technical term or the little, it looks like a tiny little oblong cylindrical looking bead with some stripes on it attached to a wire and when current runs through it the only way you can tell that there's anything going on is if it starts burning okay you see it or you touch it and it feels very hot so um, a lot of times we use light bulbs because you guys can see that something is happening you can see the interaction um, so if you have a resistor or some load and you don't want to draw a toaster or something like that, you draw a picture of the item, um, we use a very basic little uh, symbol where it's like a wire and then uh, just some little zigzags. A light bulb, um, I like to draw a wire with a loop for the filament of the light bulb and then draw a circle around it like that to be a light bulb. And those are fairly standard um, looking pictures. I There's several different ways to do it and no one is going to be that picky as long as it doesn't look like an inductor. So just like I showed you a minute ago what a capacitor looks like, an inductor looks like this. It's a coil of wires. So that's not a resistor. So just don't make them loopy. For our wires, we make the assumption that there is negligible resistance. So in order to have resistance, in order to have something, in order for the current to connect and flow, you've got to have... Um, a light bulb or resistor or something like that. Very good question. Okay, so let's talk briefly about what is resistance. So what is this thing, this resistance? Fundamentally, what do you think it is? Transfer of the energy. It, it changes the, the energy. It's basically like friction in the wire. And I shouldn't say wire, actually, let me fix that. Friction in the load. And I put it like that because it's not like the friction you think of. This is collisions as uh, electrons move through the conductor. There's more than just free space for the electrons to move. So you go from class to class in this building and your conductors are the hallways and Getting from one place to another is not always easy, and you have this, you know, path that you have to take and people that you bump into, and it's not just this free path. There's friction there, right? Do you meet resistance as you travel through the hallway? Yes. All right, so you're like little electrons trying to get to the next class. Okay. Um, so if I were to draw a circuit to show my battery connected to a light bulb I would draw something like this and there's my light bulb what happened as you added more and more batteries to the light bulb it got brighter so there is some relation to the amount of batteries so the batteries being the energy source and the brightness, and brightness is being a, a form of energy. Isn't light a form of energy? Okay, maybe. Okay. So, 
let's talk about the lab that you did where I asked you to vary the voltage or the potential difference. And that's measured in volts, which is a joule per coulomb. So there's a lot of confusion because we tend to use the same word over and over. So voltage and a voltmeter and volts, it all sounds like it's all the same thing all the time. So I'm going to try to be, I guess, more... Um, deliberate in my vocabulary. Now, current was measured, but it was measured in milliamps, if you noticed, on the, the simulation. And hopefully you got data points that kind of looked maybe like, maybe like that or so, where it's got a nice straight line. Pretend like that's a pretty straight line that I drew with a ruler. Okay. So I asked you to set the resistance and then change the voltage, the potential difference of the battery, or the potential difference of the power source, and measure the current. Let's say that I set my resistance at um, 140 ohms. We're going to get to what that means in just a minute. So that's what I set the resistance at. And when I got my best fit line... I got an equation that looked like I is equal to 7.2B. Okay? So, or really it should be, if this is potential difference, it should be delta V. Let me do a better job of that. I'm going to make that a delta V. Potential difference. Okay. Okay. So the 7.2 is the slope of that line, and the 7.2 would be measured in milliamps per volt. So wouldn't that be 0 0.0072 amps per volt? Is there any relation between 0 0.0072 and 140? One over one forty is a point zero zero seven one four, and one forty was the resistance, right? So one over R was equal to slope. So that means that I is equal to one over R times potential difference. Now, you may have noticed, because it was a big, fat equation on that simulation, and there's nothing really I could do about that except for let you just play around with it. But wouldn't delta V be equal to I times R then? Now, I'm going to try to be a very good model instructor and use delta V every time. And it's, it's just because I want you to think every time about it being a potential difference. Electric potential difference. So this is Ohm's Law. George Simon Ohm. He was German. This is our electric potential difference. And I'm going to draw some analogies between batteries and ladders and stair steps in just a little bit. But your electric potential difference is really the energy joules per coulomb, which we call a volt, V-O-L-T, volt, for Alessandro Volta, an Italian physicist who first made, or made the first voltaic cell, layered 
zinc and copper with brine soaked cloth and was able to create an, a potential difference. I is current and current is a rate. It's a rate at which charge flows per time. So really current is coulombs per second, but we call that an amp after André-Marie Ampère, who is a French physicist who was first able to measure current, measure this flow of charge successfully. So current is defined as charge per time, so coulombs per second. So then that left this R business, which Ohm came up with this idea of it being the resistance, like the, the friction in the load, the thing that was causing the energy to go from being electrical energy to some other energy. We plug in our computers and our hair dryers and our televisions so that we can transfer, transfer energy in the form of electric energy to light energy and sound energy and thermal energy. So uh, you look at your phone all day and every time you do that, you know, you, oh, there's light. So some of my voltage, okay, my battery, the potential difference of the battery was, was drained a little bit because I converted some energy again. And then when the phone goes, eh, eh, and, um, and then when I get a message, then it pops up there, and that's another change in energy. So um, this is our resistance. And it's like that, that friction, and, and it would be in volts per amp. That's a weird unit. And a, and a volt is really a, a joule per coulomb, and an amp is really a, a coulomb per second. And a joule is really a newton times a meter per coulomb per coulomb seconds. And a newton is really a kilogram meter squared per second times meters. Nope, I did that wrong. Kil I put the square in the wrong place. I fix it. I fix it. Here you go. There you go. All right. So newton times meter divided by coulomb over coulombs per second. Who's loving this? And then that would be, oh, goodness. That would be a kilogram meter squared Coulomb squared seconds. Did I do my math right? All right, so that's a lot of fun to write every time. No, so we're going to call this an ohm for good old George. But the problem with his last name was that it starts with an O. And so if you have five ohms, what does that look like? 50. So we we steal a, a unit or symbol from the Greek alphabet, the uppercase omega. Looks kind of like an O with some feet. And so that's where the ohm came from. Everything can be re rewritten in its uh, fundamental unit, so there it is. All, it can't, can't get any more fundamental than those units right there. Okay, so we've got this Ohm's Law potential difference thing. So what does that mean? Well, I'm going to make an analogy. Here are some stair steps that go up to a slide. Now, we've studied gravitational potential energy, and hopefully by now you know that as you climb up, 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 up this ladder, there's a change in your gravitational energy, and 
as you then slide down the slide, hopefully you know by now that we, there's a, a change in your gravitational energy. And some of that gravitational energy is converted to other forms. Um, if you start here and you end at rest, then all of our gravitational energy that was gained is converted to what, what kind of energy over here? We start from rest and we slide down, but we stop at the bottom of our slide. We have some, some thermal energy. Your, your backside warms up, things happen like that. Okay, so chutes and ladders, that's all circuits are. The ladder is the battery, the slides are the resistors. So as a electron, as an electron moves through the battery, and this is where things get confusing again too, conventional current, convention means this is the rule that we're all going to follow so that nobody makes a mistake. The convention is we assume charge flows from the positive terminal of the battery to the negative terminal of the battery. So if you go back up and look at my picture right here, that means that if this is the po long side is the positive side, then the current would flow through the circuit, through the circuit this way. So I'll use little red arrows to show the direction of the current. That's the convention. So if I ask you for the direction of the current, you're going to look at the positive side of the battery and draw that loop around there. Okay? Now what's really moving is the electrons, because protons can't move. So what really moves in the circuit is the electrons. And a battery has um, different chemicals, anions and cations, positive and negative ions, and they're separated inside the battery. And they can't get to each other. But what do you know about positive and negative charges? They really want to get together. So as soon as you connect a positive end of the battery to the negative end of the battery, electrons will spontaneous, there will be an electric field, which is not a part of this curriculum, but there will be this flow of charge from the negative side of the battery, the electrons will leave the negative side of the battery and go to the positive side because that's where it wants to get with its buddies. Because inside the battery there's a boundary and they can't pass through and get um, to each other inside the battery, so they have to take the path outside of the battery to get to each other. So, they want to move. They want to move. The electrons want to move. They want to get to the other side. They have all of this desire to get to the other side. All right. So, if we look at a battery, and that battery is connected to one resistor, and then two resistor, and then three resistor. This is similar to an analogy, okay, of you climbing the water park slide, and it's got this really cool slide system, so making it up totally, but imagine that you have one slide like this, and then right after that slide, there's another slide, and maybe it's like, woo, like that. And then maybe you've got one more after this one, right afterwards, so there's no, basically no stopping. You get to go down another slide here. And maybe this one is a nice, gentle slide. But no matter what, you end up back here at the pool at the bottom. And what does everybody do? Everybody takes the path back over to the stairs, and we go up up, 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 and slide down, 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 every time. So, the there is some thermal energy generated in the first bit, there's thermal energy generated in the second bit, and there's thermal energy generated in the third little slide that I have connected. 
what can you say about all these thermal energies as compared to the gain of gravitational energy as we climb the slide? They're equal. Okay, so hold on to that. And remember, batteries are measured by their potential difference or the amount of joules per coulomb, okay, energy per charge. So imagine that we've, we're measuring not just the energy, but the, the energy per mass of a, a person who goes up and slides down. So as we go through the battery, there is a gain in electric potential difference through the battery. But so the charge goes through the battery, that's kind of like going, uh, don't, it's not really going through the battery, but there's a the charge that leaves the battery wants to get over to the other side. So conventional current says that current would go from the positive side of the battery to the negative side of the battery. So for the moment, pretend that positive charges really want to get over here to this negative side. Okay? So they really want to go over there. They've got some energy because they've been separated from their, their BFFs and they want to get together. All right. So the charge leaves the battery and it has some energy. Just like a person leaves the top of the slide and has this energy that we've gained from walking up the slide. Then as, as the charge moves through each resistor, R1, R2, and R3, there is a change in energy. So there is a drop in potential difference. There's a delta V1. So I'm trying to use the deltas. There's a delta V2. There's a delta V3. I want you to think of the change in potential, the delta Vs, as being like the change in height. So do each of my slide pieces over here have the same height difference? Do they have to have the same height difference? They have to sum up to the total height of the, the stairs. Okay, so if I go around and say, okay, well, we're going to gain this energy from the battery, but then as I go through each one of the resistors, my um, charges are going to have a drop in electric potential and a drop in electric potential and a drop in electric potential and then adding all that up I should it should be equal to zero so then that tells me that the electric potential difference of the battery should be equal to the sum of the potential differences of each one of my resistors Okay. Now another question. So um, first of all, let me tell you about our uh, our water park. Our water park is for non-chickens. Nobody climbs the slide ladder and chickens out. Nobody goes backwards. So so no chickens. That means everybody that climbs the ladder goes down the slide. There's no chicken. And this is the most popular slide water slide ever so that like as soon as you get off of it everybody's running back around and go back up the hill okay and that you know uh let's see when i go to take my kids sometimes to like linear water park it's like the kids hit the water at the bottom and they start just run back around and they just make this loop of constantly going okay and if i were to sit there with my stopwatch and watch the kids come down and go back up i would see you know, a certain number of kids per time. So like a current of kids per time. So if you think about these uh, slides here that I've drawn, okay? So you got kids climbing the ladder. Kids climbing the ladder. Going down, slide, down, slide, down, slide, down, slide, down. Just can't slide, slide. The current, the person current, is going to be the same as up the ladder is down the slide because there's nowhere else for them to go. And it's so popular, and everybody's just going to keep making that, that circuit, that loop around and around and around the slide of science. Okay? So that means take the people, convert them to electrons. The electrons 
are the charges, I'm just going to make sure, just the charges that flow through the circuit. And if I look at the conventional current, so I'm starting over here, it's a positive sign of battery. So the charge goes through this resistor. Does it have anywhere else it can go? It must go through here. And it must go through there. And there's always one behind it, continuously pushing them. And there's one behind it, one behind it, and one behind it. Like the kids get out of the, the pool at the bottom of the slide, like, buddy, go, I'm taking care of you, you know? And, and they run all around. So the current through each one of these is the same. There's nowhere else for it to go. So the current through these resistors that are in series with each other must be the same. My slides can be different, but my current must be the same. So this current must be the same as this current, which must be the same as this current, which must be the same as the current that goes through the battery. Another analogy is like a choo-choo train. So, like, and we're going to go Thomas the Tank Engine, because I know a real tra train has like a couples, it couples together, and then as the... The engine starts, the couples link up, da, 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 and it pulls the slack in. So the, the caboose doesn't go immediately in a real train. So let's go Thomas, a tank engine. We've got them all connected to each other by magnets. As soon as you hit the button and Thomas starts going, because we have the electric Thomas that runs around the track, and all of them start going. And if I sit there and watch the train, I see the same number of cars pass through a point on the train anywhere on that track because they have nowhere else to go. They're being driven by the same power source. So electrons are like parts of a choo-choo train. And they're all in that circuit. And as soon as one of them starts moving, they're all moving. And they're linked together, sort of. And they're following each other and flowing through that circuit. So hopefully you saw the little blue spheres in the simulation and that was the electrons that were um, moving. All right, so if, if the change in electric potential is Ohm's law, so that would be um, I through the battery times the resistance of the circuit, and that would equal I1 R1 plus I2 R2 plus I3 R3. And what do you know about all of these currents if there's nowhere for the electrons to go and everybody goes? They're the same. And if they're the same, then you could divide out by that constant. Remember, they're all the same. And you would get that R for the circuit, or the equivalent resistance for the circuit, is the sum of the resistors in this series. And then you could have as many as you want. So series resistors add up. So if you have a 2 ohm resistor in series with a 4 ohm resistor, the total resistance is 6 ohms. Easy cheesy. The current, though, I1 is equal to I2, is equal to I3, is equal to I, all of them, okay? So the current is the same. The resistance can be different. The potential difference for each resistor can be different, just like the height of each piece of my slide could be different. Now, alternately... And your simulation, you weren't um, specifically told to do this. But imagine that we've got a slide, and I've been to these parks where you climb the tower, and you get up there, and you can go down this slide. Or you can go down this slide. Or you could go down this slide. Have you ever been to a park where you get to the top and you can choose which slide to go down? Sometimes there's two, three, four different choices. Um, okay, so has everybody climbed the same height to get to the top of this thing? Yeah, 
Does everybody go through the same height difference as they slide down these slides? Yeah. Okay. But are each is each slide different? Yeah. So this one right here looks like the free fall, right? It's the kind that you have to like cross your legs and crisscross your arms over your chest and go down those. You know what I'm talking about? All right. So tell me about the resistance of this slide. Pretty low, okay. And then what about my, my third one over here compared to the middle one? Right, so they're different. You could say that each one of these slides is different. So they're different. There's low resistance on the, the free fall drop one, right? And then there's a, a little less, a little more resistance on the far right and a little more resistance even in the middle with the current, the number of people that can go down the slide per time be different. Yeah. So when you have a battery or a power source connected to multiple resistors, so remember a resistor is kind of like a slide, so we go up the steps and we can choose to go down this slide. Or we can walk over here and choose to go down this slide. Or we can walk over here because we're all at the same height. This is up there at the same, um, this side right here represents being at the top of the platform. And then you just have these three different resistors you can choose to, to go through. So in this case, they're all going to have the same height. So this would be delta V, this would be the same delta V, and this would be the same delta V because the change in potential is like the change in height. The energy gained by the charge due to the battery is like the energy you gain due to the height of the slide. But what's different is that you may have current 1, current 2, and current 3 going through each one of these resistor 1, resistor 2, and resistor 3. So the height of the ladder is the change in potential of the battery, in my crazy analogy. So delta V for your battery will be equal to delta V of your first resistor, which will be equal to delta V of your second resistor, which will be equal to delta V of your third resistor, and so on, as many as you have in this arrangement. Now let's talk about current. If you stand at the bottom of the stairs, or even in the middle of the stairs, do you see the same number of people pass by that point as get out of the pool over here? Not go down the slide, but get out of the pool. If you watch a grocery store, do you see the same number of people go in as come out? Hopefully, otherwise someone is stealing someone. I don't know. Right? Are there different cashiers in the world? Yes, there are some cashiers that are fat. Some cashiers that are slow. And then there's like the variable cashier that is you going for self-checkout. So, you know, that's fun too. But, but everybody splits up. You don't see a line of just people in the fast cashier line. What happens? The slow cashier has a gap and people go stand over there because we, we want to even out. So even though one of these resistors, one of these slides, may be a longer wait, when you get to the top of the uh, platform where you climbed up and you see, oh, there are three people, three people, and one person. Oh, I'm going to go the short line, <laughs> right? Isn't that what you do? You'll get the short line. And even though that might be the biggest resistor, the biggest, longest slide, or the, the slowest slide, that's what I really need to say, the slowest cashier, you go and get line because it's the shortest line, okay? But that cashier has fewer customers per time. That long, that that uh, that slow slide has 
fewer people per time enjoying it. But everybody who walks up the steps comes down the slides. So all the current that goes into these branches must go out of the branches. I'm trying so hard to make an analogy here. So that means that I, through the battery, must equal I1 plus I2 plus I3. So you're adding up all of the currents. You want to figure out the total people going through the, the circuit of the water slide. You could add them up. All right, so then if the difference in potential is equal to IR, then I is equal to delta V over R. Does that make sense so far? I'm rhyming today. Jake's going to love this. He's going to be the only person that watches this, so I can talk to him. Hey, Jake. All right, so I battery would be delta V of your battery divided by R of your circuit. I1 would be delta V of resistor 1 over R1. Delta V2 over R2 and delta V3 over R3. Now what do you know about the, the potential difference of a battery and each one of the resistors? It is the same. So you could divide through by that constant because they were all the same. You can divide through and that's going to leave me with 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, and so on and so on, as many as you have in parallel with each other. So resistors in series, I'm going to go back up here for just a minute. So resistors in series add together. Resistors in parallel add as, um, what is the word I'm looking for? They're inverse, but they're, there's a word I was looking for and it just escaped. So we call these parallel resistors. So what, what happens? When you open up more lanes to a highway, what happens to the resistance of that highway? It lowers. So do you see that when you actually find the equivalent resistance, it's going to be the inverse of the sum of these inverses. <laughs> so, it's, so it takes some manipulation there. But hopefully what you see is something really, really kind of neat. So let's, let's look at a really quick example. So if you have two resistors and they're in series with each other, and you've got a 2 ohm resistor and a 2 ohm resistor, what's the equivalent resistance? Four ohms. Easy cheesy lemon squeezy. If you take those two and you put them in parallel with each other, so do you see that they're in parallel? I can choose which resistor if I start from one side to the other. I've got a 2 ohm here and a 2 ohm there. Now that takes a little more math. So 1 over the inverse of the equivalent is equal to 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2. I picked an easy one. What's that? 1. What's the inverse of 1? So what's our equivalent resistance when I put them in parallel? 1 ohm. So how would you wire resistors to reduce the resistance in parallel? So that's why when we have gates to get into uh, Disney World or uh, cashiers, they're all in parallel with each other because it gives us more branches. What are they doing to old Atlanta out here? The widening at Y. Because it has so much resistance right now. We've got to have more space for our little electron people to move in their cars. All right. Love you, man. Call me later.